Ryuperu by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King High and solemn mountains guard Ryuperu, Small untidy village where the river drives a mill, Frail as wood anemones, white and frail were you, And drooping a little, like the slender daffodil. Oh, I will go to France again, and tramp the valley through, and I will change these gentle clothes for clog and corduroy, and work with the mill hands of black Rio Peru, and walk with you, and talk with you, like any other boy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ballad of Camden Town by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Steve Chilvers, Norwich, England I walked with Maisie long years back the streets of Camden Town I splendid in my suit of black and she divine in bran Hers was a proud and noble face, a secret art and eyes like water in a lonely place beneath unclouded skies a bed a chest a faded mat and broken chairs a few were all we had to grace our flat in hazel avenue 
but i could walk to amsterd eef and crown her red with daisies and watch the stream and world beneath and men with other mazies when i was ill and she was pale and empty stood our store she left the latch key on its nail and saw me never more perhaps she cast herself away lest both of us should drown perhaps she feared to die as they who die in camden tan what came of her the bitter nights destroy the rose and lily and souls are lost among the lights of painted piccadilly what came of her the river flows so deep and wide and stilly and waits to catch the fallen rose and clasp the broken lily i dream she dwells in london still and breathes the evening air and often walk to primrose hill and hope to meet her there once more together we will live for i will find her yet i have so little to forgive so much i can't forget end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mignon by James L. Roy Flecker, read for LibriVox.org by Roslyn Carlyle. Knowest thou the land where bloom the lemon trees, and darkly gleam the golden oranges? A gentle wind blows down from that blue sky. Calm stands the myrtle and the laurel high. Knowest thou the land, so far and fair, thou whom I love, and I will wander there? Knowest thou the house, with all its rooms aglow, and shining hall, and columned portico? The marble statues stand, and look at me. Alas, poor child, what have they done to thee? Knowest thou the land, so far and fair? My guardian, thou and I, will wander there. Knowest thou the mountain, with its bridge of cloud? The mule plods warily, the white mists crowd. Coiled in their caves, the brood of dragons sleep. The torrent hurls the rock from steep to steep. Knowest thou the land, so far and fair? Father, away! Our road is over there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fellow to say by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Marina Tsung The song of a man who was dead He already had heard of his song Or had seen this his ultimate song With the lines of it written in red And the sound of it steady and strong When you hear it, you know I am dead Not because I was weary of life as pallid poets are My star was a conquering star my element strife i am young i am strong i am brave it is therefore i go to the grave now to life and to life's desire and to youth and the glory of youth farewell for i go to acquire by the one road left me truth though a great god slay me with fire i will shout till he answers me why one soul and a universe why and for this it is pleasant to die for years and years I have slumbered, and slumber was heavy and sweet. But the last few moments are numbered like trampling feet that beat. I shall walk with the stars in their courses, and hear very soon, very soon, the voice of the forge of the forces, and ride in a ridge of the moon, and sing a celestial tune. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tenebris Interlucentem by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle A linnet who had lost her way sang on a blackened bough in hell till all the ghosts remembered well the trees 
the wind, the golden day. At last they knew that they had died when they heard music in that land, and someone there stole forth a hand to draw a brother to his side. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Invitation to a young but learned friend to abandon archaeology for the moment and play once more with his neglected muse by James Elroy Flecker. Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, USA. In those good days when we were young and wise, you spake to music, you with the thoughtful eyes, and God looked down from heaven, pleased to hear a young man's song arise so firm and clear. Has fancy died? The morning star gone cold? Why are you silent? Have we grown so old? Must I alone keep playing? Will not you, Lord of the measures, string your lyre anew? Lover of Greece, is this the richest store you bring us, withered leaves and dusty lore, and broken vases widowed of their wine, to brand you pedant while you stand divine? Decorous words beseem the learned lip, but poets have the nicer scholarship. In English glades they watch the Cyprian glow, and all the maned melodies they know. They hear strange voices in a London street, and track the silver gleam of rushing feet. And these are things that come not to the view of slippered dons who read a codex through. O oh, honeyed poet, will you praise no more the moonlit garden and the midnight shore? Brother, have you forgotten how to sing the story of that weak and cautious king? who reigned two hundred years in Trebizond? You who would ever strive to pierce beyond love's ecstasy, life's vision, is it well we should not know the tales you have to tell? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ballad of the Londoner by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org By Steve Chilvers Norwich, England Evening falls on the smoky walls And the railings drip with rain And I will cross the old river To see my girl again The great and solemn glide and tram Love's still mysterious car As many a light of gold and white and a single dark red star. I know a garden in a street which no one ever knew. I know a rose beyond the Thames where flowers are pale and foo. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The First Sonnet of Bath Roulaire by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Claudia Salto Over the moonless land of Bathrolaire Rises at night, when revelry begins, A white, unreal orb, a sun that spins, A sun that watches with a sullen stare, That dance spasmodic they are dancing there whilst drone and cry and drone of violins hint at the sweetness of forgotten sins or call the devotees of shame to prayer and all the spaces of the midnight town ring with a peal and sorrowful abuse there some most lonely are some try to crown mad lovers with sad boughs of formal use, and titan women wandering up and down lead on the pale fanatics of the muse. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Second Sonnet of Beth Rolaire by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Claudia Salto Now the sweet dawn on brighter fields afar Has walked among the daisies, And has breathed the glory of the mountain winds, And sheathed the stubborn sword of night's last shining star in bathrolair when day's old doors unbar the motley mask fantastically wreathed pass through a strong portcullis brazen teethed and enter glowing mines of cinnabar stupendous prisons shut them out from day gratings and caves and rayless catacombs and the unrelenting wreck and tourniquet grind death in cells where jetting gaslight glooms and iron ladders stretching far away dive to the depth of those eternal domes end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mask of the magi by james elroy flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. Three kings have come to Bethlehem, with a trailing star in front of them. Mary, what would you in this little place, you three bright kings? Kings, mother, we tracked the trailing star, which brought us here from lands afar and we would look on his dear face round whom the seraphs fold their wings mary but who are you bright kings caspar caspar am i the rocky north from storm and silence drave me forth down to the blue and tideless sea i do not fear the tinkling sword for i am a great battle lord and love the horns of chivalry and i have brought thee splendid gold the strong man's joy refined and cold all hail thou prince of galilee balthazar i am balthazar lord of ind where blows a soft and scented wind from taprobane towards cathay my children who are tall and wise stand by a tree with shutten eyes and seem to meditate or pray and these red drops of frankincense betoken man's intelligence hail lord of wisdom prince of day melchior i am the dark man melchior and i shall live but little more since i am old and feebly move my kingdom is a burnt-up land, half buried by the drifting sand. So hot Apollo shines above, what could I bring but simple myrrh, white blossom of the cordial fire? Hail, Prince of Souls and Lord of Love! Chorus of Angels O Prince of Souls and Lord of Love, O'er thee the purple-breasted dove, shall watch with open silver wings thou king of kings suaviol o flos virginium apparut rex gentium who art thou little king of kings his wondering mother sings end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Ballad of Hampstead Heath by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Steve Chilvers, Norwich, England From Evans Gate to Hampstead Heath, young Bacchus and his crew Came tumbling down, and o'er the tan their bursting trumpets blew The silver night was wildly bright, and madly shone the moon To hear a song so clear and strong with such a lovely tune 
from london's houses huts and flats came busmen snobs and earls and ugly men in bowler hats with charming little girls so moses came with eyes of flame judd who is like a bloater the brave lord mayor in coach and pair king edward in his motor far in a rosy mist withdrawn the god and all his crew silenus pulled by nymphs a fawn a satyr drenched in dew smiled as they wept those shining tears only immortals know whose feet are set among the stars above the shifting snow and one spake out into the night before they left for ever rejoice rejoice and his great voice rolled like a splendid river he spake in greek which britons speak seldom and circumspectly but mr judd that man of mud translated it correctly and when they heard that happy word policemen leapt and ambled the busmen pranced the maidens danced the men in bowlers gambled a wistful echo stayed behind to join the mortal dancers but mr judd with words unkind rejected her advances and parson dan through london tan she stopped for all was lonely attracted by a big brass plate inscribed for members only and so she went to parliament but those ungainly men woke up from sleep and turned about and fell asleep again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Litany to Satan by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Jordan Heron O grandest of the angels and most wise, O fallen God, fate driven from the skies, Satan, at last take pity on our pain. O first of exiles who endurest wrong, yet growest in thy hatred still more strong, Satan, at last take pity on our pain o subterranean king omniscient healer of man's immortal discontent satan at last take pity on our pain to lepers and to outcasts thou dost show that passion is the paradise below satan at last take pity on our pain thou by the mistress death hast given to man hope the imperishable courtesan satan at last take pity on our pain thou givest to the guilty their calm mien which damns the crowd around the guillotine satan at last take pity on our pain thou knowest the corners of the jealous earth where god has hidden jewels of great worth satan at last take pity on our pain Thou dost discover by mysterious signs Where sleep the buried people of the mines. Satan, at last take pity on our pain. Thou stretchest forth a saving hand To keep such men as roam upon the roofs in sleep. Satan, at last take pity on our pain. Thy power can make the halting drunkard's feet Avoid the peril of the surging street. Satan, at last take pity on our pain thou to console our helplessness didst plot the cunning use of powder and of shot satan at last take pity on our pain thy awful name is written as with pitch on the unrelenting foreheads of the rich satan at last take pity on our pain in strange and hidden places thou dost move where women cry for torture in their love satan at last take pity on our pain father of those whom god's tempestuous ire has flung from paradise with sword and fire satan at last take pity on our pain satan to thee be praise upon the height where thou wast king of old and in the night of hell where thou dost dream on silently grant that one day 
beneath the knowledge tree when it shoots forth to grace thy royal brow my soul may sit that cries upon thee now end of poem this recording is in the public domain the translator and the children by james elroy flecker read for LibriVox.org by Diana Meulinger. While I translated Baudelaire, children were playing out in the air. Turning to watch, I saw the light that made their clothes and faces bright. I heard the tune they meant to sing as they kept dancing in a ring. But I could not forget my book and thought of men whose faces shook when babies passed them with a look. They are as terrible as death, those children in the road beneath. Their witless chatter is more dread than voices in a madman's head. Their dance more awful and inspired, because their feet are never tired, than silent revel with soft sound of pipes on consecrated ground, when old ghosts go round and round. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Opportunity by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Schneblin of Kansas City, Missouri Opportunity from Machiavelli But who art thou with curious beauty graced, O woman stamped with some bright heavenly seal? Why go thy feet on wings and in such haste? I am that maid whose secret few may steal, called opportunity i hasten by because my feet are treading on a wheel being more swift to run than birds to fly and rightly on my feet my wings i wear to blind the sight of those who track and spy rightly in front i hold my scattered hair to veil my face and down my breast to fall lest men should know my name when i am there and leave behind my back no wisp at all for eager folk to clutch what time I glide, So near and turn and pass beyond recall. Tell me, who is that figure at thy side? Penitence, mark this well that by decree, Who lets me go must keep her for his bride. And thou hast spent much time in talk with me, Busied with thoughts and fancies vainly grand. Nor hast remarked, O fool, neither dost see, how lightly I have fled beneath thy hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Destroyer of Men, Ships, Cities by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Schneblin of Kansas City, Missouri Helen of Troy has sprung from hell to claim her ancient throne. So we have bidden friends farewell to follow her alone. The lady of the laureled brow, the queen of pride and power, looks rather like a phantom now, and rather like a flower. Deep in her eyes the lamp of night burns with a secret flame, where shadows pass that have no sight, and ghosts that have no name. For mute is battle's brazen horn that rang for priest and king, And she who drank of that brave morn is pale with evening. An hour there is when bright words flow, a little hour for sleep, An hour between when lights are low, and then she seems to weep. But no less lovely than of old she shines, and almost hears The horns that blew in days of gold, the shouting charioteers. And still she breaks the hearts of men, their hearts, and all their pride, Doomed to be cruel once again, and live dissatisfied. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. War Song of the Saracens by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Schneblin of Kansas City, Missouri We are they who come faster than fate. We are they who ride early or late. 
we storm at your ivory gate pale kings of the sunset beware not on silk nor in samet we lie not in curtained solemnity die among women who chatter and cry and children who mumble a prayer but we sleep by the ropes of the camp and we rise with a shout and we tramp with the sun or the moon for a lamp and the spray of the wind in our hair from the lands where the elephants are to the forts of meru and balgar our steel we have brought and our star to shine on the ruins of rum we have marched from the indus to spain and by god we will go there again we have stood on the shore of the plain where the waters of destiny boom a mart of destruction we made at jalula where men were afraid for death was a difficult trade and the sword was a broker of doom and the spear was a desert physician who cured not a few of ambition and drave not a few to perdition with medicine bitter and strong and the shield was a grief to the fool and as bright as a desolate pool and as straight as the rock of stamboul when their cavalry thundered along for the coward was drowned with the brave when our battle sheared up like a wave and the dead to the desert we gave and the glory to god in our song end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Joseph and Mary by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Schneblin of Kansas City, Missouri Mary, art thou the little maid who plucked me flowers in spring? I know thee not, I feel afraid, thou'rt strange this evening. A sweet and rustic girl I won, what time the woods were green, No woman with deep eyes that shone, And pale brows of a queen. A stranger came with feet of flame, And told me this strange thing, For all I was a village maid, My son should be a king. A king, dear wife, who ever knew Of kings in stables born? Do you hear in the dark and starlit blue The clarion and the horn? Mary, alas, lest grief and joy have sent thy wits astray, but let me look on this my boy, and take the wraps away. Behold the lad! I dare not gaze, light streams from every limb. The winter sun has stored his rays, and passed the fire to him. Look eastward, look, I hear a sound, O oh, Joseph, what do you see? The snow lies quiet on the ground, and glistens on the tree. The sky is bright with a star's clear light, and clearly I behold Three kings descending yonder hill, whose crowns are crowns of gold. O oh Mary, what do you hear and see with your brow toward the west? The snow lies glistening on the tree, and silent on earth's breast. And strong and tall with lifted eyes, seven shepherds walk this way, And angels breaking from the skies dance and sing hymns and pray. I wonder much at these bright kings, the shepherds I despise. You know not what a shepherd sings, nor see his shining eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. No Coward Song by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler Albuquerque, USA I am afraid to think about my death, when it shall be, and whether in great pain I shall rise up and fight the air for breath, or calmly wait the bursting of my brain. I am no coward who would seek and fear a folklore solace or sweet Indian tales. I know dead men are deaf and cannot hear the singing of a thousand nightingales. I know dead men are blind and cannot see the friend that shuts in horror their big eyes, and they are witless. Oh, I'd rather be a living mouse than dead as a man dies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Western Voyage by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer My friend, the sun, like all my friends, 
inconstant lovely far away is out and bright and condescends to glory in our holiday a furious march with him i'll go and race him in the western train and wake the hills of long ago and swim the devon sea again I have done foolishly to head the footway of the false moonbeams, to light my lamp and call the dead and read their long black printed dreams. I have done foolishly to dwell with fear upon her desert isle, to take my shadowgraph to hell, and then to hope the shades would smile. And since the light must fail me soon, but faster, faster, western train, proud meadows of the afternoon, I have remembered you again. And I'll go seek through moor and dale a flower that wastrel winds caress. The bud is red and the leaves pale, the name of it forgetfulness. Then, like the old and happy hills, with frozen veins and fires outrun, I'll wait the day when darkness kills my brother and good friend, the sun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fountains by James Elroy Flacker. Read for LibriVox.org by Marina Tsung. Soft is the cold night, and cool the wind about the garden pool. Here will I dip my burning hand, and move an inch of drowsy sand, and pray the dark reflected skies to fasten with their seal mine eyes. A million million leagues away, among the stars the goldfish play, and high above the shadowed stars wave and float the nanophars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Welsh Sea by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil Far out across Carnarvon Bay, beneath the evening waves, The ancient dead begin their day, and stream among the graves. Listen, for they of ghostly speech, who died when Christ was born, may dance upon the golden beach that once was golden corn. And you may learn of Dyford's reign, and dream the Median tales, of kings who sail in ships from Spain, and lend their swords to whales. Listen, for like a golden snake, the ocean twists and stirs, and whispers how the dead men wake, and call across the years. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Oxford Canal by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox by Jill Clancy, September 2014 in Los Angeles, California When you have wearied of the valiant spires of this county town, of its wide white streets and glistening museums and black monastic walls, of its red motors and lumbering trains and self-sufficient people, I will take you walking with me to a place you have not seen, half town and half country, the land of the canal. It is dearer to me than the antique town. I love it more than the rounded hills. Straightest, sublimest of rivers is the long canal. I have observed great storms and trembled. I have wept for fear of the dark, but nothing makes me so afraid is the clear water of this idle canal on a summer's noon. Do you see the great telegraph poles down in the water? How every wire is distinct? If a body fell into the canal, it would rest entangled in those wires forever between earth and air. For the water is as deep as the stars are high. One day I was thinking how if a man fell from that lofty pole, he would rush through the water toward me till his image was scattered by his splash when suddenly a train rushed by, the brazen dome of the engine flashed, the long white carriages roared. The sun veiled himself for a moment, and the signals loomed in fog. A savage woman screamed at me from a barge. 
little children began to cry. The untidy landscape rose to life. A sawmill started. A cart rattled down to the wharf, and workmen clanged over the iron footbridge. A beautiful old man nodded from the first story window of a square red house, and a pretty girl came out to hang up clothes in a small delightful garden. A strange motion in the suburb of a county town, slow regular movement of the dance of death. Men and not phantoms are these that move in light. Forgotten they live and forgotten die. End of poem. This reading is in the public domain. How Mar Speaks to the Raven from Le Conte de Liesel by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox by Jill Clancy, September 2014, in Los Angeles, California. Night on the blood-stained snow, the wind is chill, and there a thousand tombless warriors lie. Grasping their swords, wild, featured, all are still. Above them the black ravens will and cry. A brilliant moon sends her cold light abroad. How Mar rises from the red and slain, heavenly leading on his broken sword, and bleeding from his side the battle rain. Hail to you all, is there one breath still drawn among those fierce and fearless lads who played so merrily and sang as sweet in the dawn as thrushes singing in the bramble shade? They had no word to say, my helm's unbound, my breastplate by the axe unriveted. Bloods on my eyes I hear a spreading sound, like waves or wolves that clamor in my head. Eater of men, old raven, come this way, and with thine iron bill open my breast. Tomorrow find us where we lie today, and bear my heart to her that I love best. Through Uppsala, where drink the jarls and sing, and clash their golden bowls in company, bird of the moor, carry on tireless wing to Yilmar's daughter, there the heart of me, and thou shalt see her standing straight and pale, high pedestalled on some rook-haunted tower. She has two earrings, silver and vermeil, and eyes like stars that shine in sunset hour. Tell her, my love, thou dark bird ominous, give her my heart, no bloodless heart and vile. But red, compact, and strong, O raven, thus shall Yilmar's daughter greet thee with a smile. Now let my life from twenty deep wounds flow, and wolves may drink the blood, my time is done. Young, brave, and spotless, I rejoice to go, and sit where all the gods are, in the sun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ballad of the Student in the South by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer It was no sooner than this morn that first I found you there deep in a field of southern corn as golden as your hair i had read books you had not read yet i was put to shame to hear the simple words you said and see your eyes aflame shall i forget when prying dawn sends me about my way the careless stars the quiet lawn and you with whom i lay yours is the beauty of the moon the wisdom of the sea since first you tasted sweet and soon of god's forbidden tree darling a scholar's fancies sink so faint beneath your song and you are right why should we think we who are young and strong for we are simple you and i we do what others do linger in toil and laugh and die and love the whole night through end of poem this recording is in the public domain the queen's song by james elroy flecker read for LibriVox.org by paul Cicchetti. had i the power to midas given of old to touch a flower and leave the petals gold i then might touch thy face delightful boy and leave a metal grace a graven joy 
Thus I would say, a ah, desperate device, the vital day that trembles in thine eyes, and let the red lips close, which sang so well, and drive away the rose to leave a shell. Then I myself, rising austere and dumb, on the high shelf of my half-lighted room, would place the shining bust and wait alone, until I was but dust buried unknown. This in my love for nations yet unborn, I would remove from our two lives the morn, and muse on loveliness in mine armchair, content should time confess how sweet you were. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lord Arnaldos by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Paul Cicchetti Quien y belse tal ventura The strangest of adventures that happened by the sea befell to Lord Arnaldos on the evening of St. John for he was out a-hunting, a huntsman bold was he, when he beheld a little ship, and close to land was she. Her cords were all of silver, her snails of cramse, and he who sailed the little ship was singing at the helm. The waves stood still to hear him, the wind was soft and low, the fish who dwell in darkness ascended through the sea, and all the birds in heaven flew down to his mast tree, then spake the Lord Arnaldos, Well, shall you hear his words? Tell me, for God's sake, sailor, what song may that song be? Then sailor spake in answer, and answer thus made he, I only tell my song to those who sail away with me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. We That Were Friends by James Elroy Flucker Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer We that were friends tonight have found A sudden fear, a secret flame I am on fire with that soft sound you make In uttering my name Forgive a young and boastful man Whom dreams delight and passions please and love me as great women can who have no children at their knees end of poem this recording is in the public domain my friend by james elroy flucker read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer i had a friend who battled for the truth with stubborn heart and obstinate despair till all his beauty left him and his youth and there were few to love him anywhere then would he wander out among the graves and think of dead men lying in a row or standing on a cliff observe the waves and hear the wistful sound of winds below and yet they told him nothing so he sought the twittering forest at the break of day, or on fantastic mountains shaped a thought as lofty and impenitent as they. And next he went in wonder through a town, slowly by day and hurriedly by night, and watched men walking up the street and down with timorous and terrible delight. Weary he drew man's wisdom from a book, and pondered on the high words spoken of old, pacing a lamp-lit room, but soon forsook the golden sentences that left him cold. After, a woman found him, and his head lay on her breast, till he forgot his pain in gentle kisses on a midnight bed, and welcomed royal-winged joy again when love became a loathing as it must he knew not where to turn and he was wise being now old to sink among the dust and rest his rebel heart 
and close his eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ideal by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Paul Cicchetti When all my gentle friends had gone, I wandered in the night alone. Beneath the green electric glare, I saw men pass with hearts of stone. Yet still I heard them everywhere, those golden voices of the air. Friend, we will go to hell with thee. Thy griefs, thy glories we will share, and rule the earth and bind the sea and set ten thousand devils free what dost thou stranger at my side thou gaunt old man accosting me away this is my night of pride on lunar seas my boat will glide and i shall know the secret things that old man answered woe betide said i the world was made for kings to him who works and working sings Come joy and majesty and power, and steadfast love with royal wings. O oh, watch these fools that blink and cower, said the wise man, and every hour a score is born, a dozen dies. Said I, in London fades the flower, but far away the bright blue skies shall watch my solemn walls arise, and all the glory, all the grace of earth shall gather there and eyes will shine like stars in that new place said he indeed of ancient race thou comest with thy hollow scheme but sail o architect of dream to lands beyond the ocean stream where are the islands of the blest and where atlantis where thelem end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mary Magdalene by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Andre Borisenko Oh, eyes that stripped the souls of men! There came to me the Magdalene. Her blue robe with a cord was bound, Her hair with Lenten lilies crowned. Arise, she said, God calls for thee. Turn to new paths, thy feet must be. Leave the fever and the feast, Leave the friend thou lovest best, For thou must walk in barefoot ways To give my dear Lord Jesus praise. Then answered I, Sweet Magdalene, God's servant, Once beloved of men, Why didst thou change thy ways for new, Thy trailing red for corded blue? Roses for lilies on thy brow, Rich splendor for a barren vow? Gentle of speech, she answered me, Sir, I was sick with revelry. True, I have scarred the night with sin, A pale and tawdry heroine. But once I heard a voice that said, Who lives in sin is surely dead. But whoso turns to follow me Hath joy and immortality. O oh, Mary, not for this, I cried, didst thou renounce thy scented pride, not for a taste of endless years, or barren joy apart from tears, didst thou desert the courts of men? Tell me thy truth, sweet Magdalene. She trembled, and her eyes grew dim, for love of him, for love of him. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Rose from Dreamless Hours by James Elroy Flacker Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler Albuquerque, USA I rose from dreamless hours and sought the morn that beat upon my window. From the sill I watched sweet lands where autumn light newborn swayed through the trees and lingered on the hill. If things so lovely are, why labor still to dream of something more than this I see? Do I remember tales of Galilee, 
I who have slain my faith and freed my will? Let me forget dead faith, dead mystery, dead thoughts of things I cannot comprehend. Enough the light mysterious in the tree, enough the friendship of my chosen friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Prayer by James Elroy Flecker. Read for LibriVox.org by Rosalind Carlyle. Let me not know how sins and sorrows glide along the sombre city of our rage, or why the sons of men are heavy eyed. Let me not know, except from printed page, the pain of litter love, of baffled pride, or sickness shadowing with a long presage let me not know since happy some have died quickly in youth or quietly in age how faint how loud the bravest hearts have cried end of poem this recording is in the public domain a miracle of bethlehem by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Scene A street of that village Three men with ropes Accosted by a stranger The stranger I pray you, tell me where you go With heads averted from the skies and long ropes trailing in the snow, and resolution in your eyes. The first man. I am a lover sick of love, for scorn rewards my constancy, and now I hate the stars above, because my dear will not of me. The second man. I am a beggar man, and play, songs with a splendid swing in them, but I have seen no food to-day. They want no song in Bethlehem. The third man. I am an old man, sir, and blind, A child of darkness since my birth. I cannot even call to mind The beauty of the scheme of earth. Therefore I sought to understand A secret hid from mortal eyes, So in a far and fragrant land I talked with men accounted wise. And I implored the Indian priest For wisdom from his holy snake, Yet am no wiser in the least, And have not seen the darkness break. Stranger, and whither go ye now, unhappy three? The three men with ropes. Sir, in our strange and special misery, We met this night, and swore in bitter pride, To sing one song together, friend with friend, and then, proceeding to the countryside, to bind this cordage to a barren tree, and face to face to give our lives an end, and only thus shall we be satisfied. They make to continue their road. The stranger. Stay for a moment. Great is your despair. But God is kind. What voice from over there? A woman from a lattice. My lover, oh my lover, come to me. First man. God with you. He runs to the window. Stranger. Ah, how swiftly gone is he. Many voices heard singing in a cottage. There is a softness in the night, a wonder in that splendid star that fills us with delight. Poor foolish working people that we are, And only fit to keep a little garden, Or a dozen sheep. Old broken women at the fire, Have many ancient tales they sing, How the whole world's desire Should blossom here, And how a child should bring New glory to his race, Though born in so contemptible a place. 
Let all come in, if any brother go, In shame or hunger, cold or fear, Through all this waste of snow. To-night the star, the rose, the song are near, And still inside the door is full provision for another score. The beggar runs to them. The stranger to the blind man. Do you not mean to share these joys? The blind man. A weary of this earthly noise, I pace my silent way. Come you, and help me tie this rope. I would not lose my only hope. Already clear the birds I hear, Already breaks the day. Stranger. O oh, foolish and most blind old man, Where are those other two? The blind man. Why, one is wed, and the other fed. Small thanks they gave to you. Stranger. To me no thanks are due, yet since I have some little power, bequeath me at this holy hour. I tell you, friend, that God shall grant this night to you your dearest want. The Blind Man Why this sweet odor? Why this flame? I am afraid. What is your name? The Stranger Ask your desire, for this great night is passing. The blind man. Sir, I ask my sight. The stranger. To see this earth, or would you see the hidden world which sent you me? The blind man. Oh, sweet it were, but once before I die, to track the bird about the windy sky, or watch the soft and changing grace imprinted on a human face. Yet grant me that which most I struggled for, since I am old, and snow is on the ground. On earth there's little to be found, and I would bear with earth no more. O oh, gentle youth, a fool am I, but let me see the truth. The stranger. Gaze in my eyes. The blind man. How can I gaze? What song is that? And what these rays? of splendor in this rush of wings the stranger these are the new celestial things the blind man round the body of a child a great dark flame runs wild what may this be the stranger look further you shall see the blind man out on the sea of time and far away the empires sail like ships in many years, scattered before them in a mist of spray. Beyond is mist when the mist clears. Enough, away, O oh friend, I would be there. Stranger, it is most sure that God has heard his prayer. The stranger vanishes. The beggar, leading a troop of revelers from the house, where they were singing. Come, brothers, seek my friend and bring him in. On such a night as this it were a sin to leave the blind alone. The revelers. Greatly we fear lest he, still resolute, have wandered to the fields for poisoned fruit. The beggar. See here upon this stone. He is all frozen. Take him to a bed and warm his hands. The revelers. Oh, sorrow, he is dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gravis dulcis immutabilis by James Elroy Flecker. Read for LibriVox.org by Martin Giessen in Hazelmere, Surrey. Come, let me kiss your wistful face Where sorrow curves her bow of pain And live sweet days and bitter days With you or wanting you again. I dread your perishable gold. Come near me now, the years are few. Alas, when you and I are old, 
i shall not want to look at you and yet come in i shall not dare to gaze upon your countenance but i shall huddle in my chair turn to the fire my fireless glance and listen while that slow and grave immutable sweet voice of yours rises and falls as falls a wave in summer on forgotten shores end of poem this recording is in the public domain pillage by james l roy flecker read for LibriVox.org, read by rob baker they will trample our gardens to mire they will bury our city in fire our women await their desire our children the clang of the chain our grave-eyed judges and lords they will bind by the neck with cords and hairy with whips and swords till they perish of shame or pain and the great lapis lazuli dome where the gods of our race had a home will break like a wave from the foam and shred into fiery rain no more on the long summer days shall we walk in the meadow's sweet ways with the teachers of music and phrase and the masters of dance and design no more when the trumpeter calls shall we feast in the white light halls for staid are the soft footfalls of the moon-browed bearers of wine and lost are the statues of kings and of gods with great glorious wings and an empire of beautiful things and the lips of the love who was mine we have vanished but not into night though our manhood we sold to delight neglecting the chances of fight unfit for the spear and the bow we are dead but our living was great we are dumb but a song of our state will roam in the desert and wait with its burden of long long ago till a scholar from sea-bright lands unearthed from the years and the sands some image with beautiful hands and know what we want him to know end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Ballad of Zacho by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Claudia Salto Zacho the king rode out of old, And truth is what I tell, With saddle and spurs and a rain of gold To find the door of hell and round around him surged the dead with soft and lustrous eyes why came you here old friend they said unwise 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 you should have left to the prince your son spurs and saddle and rein your bright and morning days are done you ride not out again I came to greet my friends who fell, sword scattered from my side, And when I've drunk the wine of hell, I'll out again and ride. But Charon rose and caught his hair in fingers sharp and long. Loose me, old ferryman, play fair, try if my arm be strong. Thrice drave he hard on Charon's breast, and struck him thrice to ground till stranger ghosts came out of the west and sat like stars around and thrice old Karen rose up high and seized him as before loose me a broken man am i and fight with you no more zecho arise my home is near i pray you walk with me I've hung my tent so full of fear, you well may shake to see. Home to my home come they who fight, who fight but not to win. Without my tent is black as night, and red as fire within. 
Though winds blow cold and I grow old, my tent is fast and fair. The pegs are dead men's stout right arms, the cords their golden hair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pavlovna in London by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer I listened to the hunger-hearted clown. Sadder than he, I heard a woman sing, a tall, dark woman in a scarlet gown, and saw those golden toys the jugglers fling. I found a tawdry room, and there sat I, there angled for each murmur soft and strange. The pavement cries from darkness and below. I watched the drinkers laugh, the lovers sigh, and thought how little all the world would change if clowns were audience and we the show. What starry music are they playing now? What dancing in this dreary theatre? Who is she with the moon upon her brow? And who the firefoot god that follows her? Follows among those unbelieved in trees, back shadowing in their parody of light across the little cardboard balustrade. And we, like that poor fawn who pipes and flees, adore their beauty, hate it for too bright, and tremble, half in rapture, half afraid. Play on, O oh furtive and heartbroken fawn. What is your thin, dull pipe for such as they? I know you blinded by the least white dawn. And dare you face their quick and quivering day? Dare you, like us, weak but undaunted men, reliant on some deathless spark in you, turn your dull eyes to what the gods desire, touch the light finger of your goddess? Then after a second's flash of golden blue, Drunken with that divinity, expire? O oh, dance, Diana, dance, Endymion, Till calm ancestral shadows lay their hands Gently across mine eyes. In days long gone, have I not danced with gods in garden lands? I too a wild unsighted atom born, Deep in the heart of some heroic boy, span in the dance ten thousand years ago and while his young eyes glittered in the morn something of me felt something of his joy and longed to rule a body and to know single long dead and sweeter lipped than i in whose proud line the soul dark phrases burn would you could praise their passionate symmetry who loved the colder shapes the attic urn. But your far song, my faint one, what are they? And what their dance and fairy thoughts and ours? Or night a bloom with splendid stars and pale? Tis an old story that sweet flowers decay, and dreams the noblest die as soon as flowers, and dancers, all the world of them, must fail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sentimentalist by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle There lies a photograph of you deep in a box of broken things. This was the face I loved and knew five years ago, when life had wings. Five years ago, when through a town of bright and soft and shadowy bowers, we walked and talked and trailed our gown, regardless of the cinctured hours. The precepts that we held I kept, Proudly my ways with you I went. We lived our dreams while others slept. 
and did not shrink from sentiment now i go east and you stay west and when between us europe lies i shall forget what i loved best away from lips and hands and eyes but we were gods then we were they who laughed at fools believed in friends and drank to all that golden day before us which this poem ends end of poem this recording is in the public domain Don Juan in Hell from Baudelaire by James Elroy Flecker read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle The night Don Juan came to pay his fees to Charon by the caverned water shore, a beggar proud-eyed as Antisthenes stretched out his knotted fingers on the oar. Mournful with drooping breasts and robes unsewn, the shapes of women swayed in ebon skies trailing behind him with a restless moan like cattle herded for a sacrifice here grinning for his wage stood scanarella and here don louis pointed bent and dim to show the dead who lined the holes of hell this was the impious son who mocked at him the hollow-eyed the chaste elvira came trembling and veiled to view her traitor spouse was it one last bright smile she thought to claim such as made sweet the morning of his vows a great stone man rose like a tower on board stood at the helm and cleft the flood profound but the calm hero leaning on his sword gazed back and would not offer one look round end of poem this recording is in the public domain thank you for listening the ballad of iskander by james elroy flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Tucker. A Flatun and Aristu and King Iskander, a Plato, Aristotle, Alexander. Sultan Iskander sat him down on his golden throne, in his golden crown, and shouted, Wine and flute girls three, and the captain ho of my ships at sea. He drank his bowl of wine, he kept the flute girls dancing till they wept praised and kissed their painted lips and turned to the captain of all his ships and cried o lord of my ships that go from the persian gulf to the pits of snow inquire for men unknown to man said sultan iskander of yunistan darush is dead and i am king of everywhere and everything yet leagues and leagues away for sure the lion-hearted dream of war admiral i command you sail take you a ship of silver mail and fifty sailors young and bold and stack provision deep in the hold and seek out twenty men that know all babble tongues which flaunt and flow and stay impress those learned two old aflatun and aristu and set your prow south-western ways a thousand bright and dimpling days and find me lion-hearted lords with breasts to feed our rusting swords the captain of the ships bowed low sir he replied i will do so and down he rode to the harbour mouth to choose a boat to carry him south and he launched a ship of silver mail with fifty lads to hoist the sail and twenty wise all tongues they knew and aflatun and aristu there had not dawned the second day but the glittering galleon sailed away and through the night like one great bell the marshalled armies sang farewell in twenty days the silver ship had passed the isle of serendip and made the flat araonian coasts inhabited at noon by ghosts in thirty days the ship was far beyond the land of calcobar where men drink dead men's blood for wine and dye their beards alizarine but on the hundredth day there came storm with his windy wings aflame and drave them out to that lone sea whose shores are near eternity for seven years and seven years sailed those forgotten mariners nor could they spy on either hand the faintest level of good red land bird or fish they saw not one 
there swam no ship beside their own and day night long the lilied deep lay round them with its flowers asleep the beams began to warp and crack the silver plates turned filthy black and drooping down on the carven rails hung those once lovely silken sails and all the great ship's crew who were such noble lads to do and dare grew old and tired of the changeless sky and laid them down on the deck to die and they who spake all tongues there be made antics with solemnity or closely huddled each to each talked ribald in a foreign speech and aflatun and aristu let their beards grow and their beards grew round and about the mainmast tree where they stood still and watched the sea and day by day their captain grey knelt on the rotting poop to pray and yet despite ten thousand prayers they saw no ship that was not theirs when thrice the seven years had passed they saw a ship a ship at last untarnished glowed its silver mail windless bellied its silken sail with a shout the grizzled sailors rose cursing the years of sick repose and they who spake in tongues unknown gladly reverted to their own the captain leapt and left his prayers and hastened down the dust-dark stairs and taking to hand a brazen whip he woke to life the long dead ship but aflatun and aristu who had no work that they could do gazed at the stranger ship and sea with their beards around the mainmast tree nearer and nearer the new boat came till the hands cried out on the old ship's shame silken sail to a silver boat we too shone when we first set float swifter and swifter the bright boat sped but the hands spake thin like men long dead how striking like that boat were we in the days sweet days when we put to sea the ship all black and the ship all white met like the meeting of day and night met and there lay serene dark green a twilight yard of the sea between and the twenty masters of foreign speech of every tongue they knew tried each smiling the silver captain heard but shook his head and said no word then aflatun and aristu addressed the silver lord anew speaking their language of unistan like countrymen to a countryman and whence they cried o sons of pride sail you the dark eternal tide lie your halls to the south or north and who is the king that sent you forth we live replied that lord with a smile a mile beyond the millionth mile we know not south and we know not north and sultan iskander sent us forth said aristu to aflatun surely our king despondent soon has sent this second ship to find unconquered tracts of humankind but aflatun turned round on him laughing a bitter laugh and grim alas he said o oh, aristu o oh, white weak thin old fool are you and does yon silver ship appear as she had journeyed twenty year and has that silver captain's face a mortal or immortal grace theirs is the land as well i know where live the shapes of things below theirs is the country where they keep the images men see in sleep theirs is the land beyond the door and theirs the old ideal shore they steer our ship behold our crew ideal and our captain too and lo beside that mainmast tree two tall and shining forms i see and they are what we ought to be yet we are they and they are we he spake and some young zephyr stirred the two ships touched no sound was heard the black ship crumbled into air only the phantom ship was there and a great cry rang round the sky of glorious singers sweeping by and calm and fair on waves that shone the silver ship sailed on and on end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of forty two poems by james elroy flecker